One of the most complicated and tedious tasks you get to do as an investor is to calculate the adjusted cost base, or ACB, for each security in your taxable accounts. Let's just say keeping track of your ACBs is not as easy as learning your ACBs, but it's every bit as essential as far as your ETF investments are concerned. So how do you do it? Well, you start with the original cost of your investment, then you adjust your cost base upwards for any new purchases, such as lump sum buys, dividend reinvestment plans, or reinvested distributions. You also adjust it downwards for any sales or return of capital distributions. While calculating your ACB is complex and time consuming, it's also extremely important. If you don't adjust it upwards, you'll pay too much tax when you sell a security. And if you neglect to adjust it downwards, you'll pay too little. That part may sound appealing, but the CRA is not likely to share your enthusiasm. I'm Justin Bender, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital in Toronto. In this video, I'll break down how to accurately track the ACB of your Vanguard or iShares Asset Allocation ETFs without losing track of your sanity. Like it or not, if you're a do-it-yourself ETF investor, accurately tracking your ACB is ultimately your responsibility. It would be nice if your brokerage did it for you. Unfortunately, you can't count on that. And your brokerage is not entirely to blame. Because your ACBs must be calculated for identical securities across all your taxable accounts, no single brokerage can see your entire picture. That said, today's video should make the process easier for you. First, let's talk about the timing. We recommend completing your ACB record keeping tasks annually, every March, before you file your personal tax return. By then, ETF providers should have had enough time to report the tax breakdown of their funds distributions, which factor into your ACB calculations. Your first step is compiling all the required information from your monthly or quarterly non-registered account statements. Remember, it's not necessary to track the ACBs for securities held in TFSAs, RSPs, or other registered accounts. Focus on the account activity section of each statement. This will include any buys or sells that took place during the calendar year, plus any dividend reinvestment plans or drips. Let's illustrate. Imagine you invested in the Vanguard Growth ETF portfolio Vigro on January 3rd, 2020, and sold it on January 29th, 2021. And along the way, there were six relevant transactions. First, there was the buy, settling on January 3rd. Then there were four drips. Three of them settled in April, July, and October 2020, and one more settled in early January 2021. And finally, on January 29th, 2021, you sold all of your Vigro units. So far, so good. Next, we'll obtain the tax breakdown for all ETF distributions recorded during the calendar year. CDS.ca provides an online resource that allows Canadian investors to download tax breakdown spreadsheets for their ETF distributions. These spreadsheets include return of capital and reinvested distribution breakdowns that help you calculate your ACB. When you visit the website, hover over the Data Consultation Tax tab and then click on the Tax Breakdown Services option. Click on the link Display Tax Information for Year 2020 or whichever year you're working on and accept the conditions on the Terms of Access, Disclaimer, and Legal Information page. You'll then be brought to the Mutual Fund and Limited Partnership Tax Breakdown Posting page. You can sort the funds alphabetically by clicking on the Security Name heading, and then scroll until you find your ETF. Then, click on the Excel icon to the right of the fund name. If there's multiple entries with the same name, click on the Excel icon with the letter R to the left of the name. The R indicates a revised tax breakdown. Once you've got your spreadsheet, look on the Statement of Trust Income Allocations and Designations for three key pieces of information you may need to calculate and track your ACB. These include the record date, the total non-cash distribution per unit, and your return of capital. We recommend saving a copy of this spreadsheet for your tax records as well. Now that you've armed yourself with all the necessary information to calculate your ACB, it's time to turn to a free online resource that will do some of the heavy lifting for you. AdjustedCostBase.ca allows you to set up an account using only your email address. 
You can then input and track all buys, drips, sells, reinvested distributions, and return a capital. You can also export this info to Microsoft Excel and download it for your files, which we strongly recommend you do so after each annual update so you'll always have a backup. To get started with adjustedcostbase.ca, the first step is to read and agree to the terms of use and register with your email address. Easy enough. Once you've registered and logged into the site, add the name of each ETF you hold in your non-registered accounts. To do this, click on New Security at the top of the page. From there, you'll be brought to a separate screen where you can input the ETF name and ticker symbol. For today's illustration, we've entered the Vanguard Growth ETF portfolio in the name field and VGrow in the ticker symbol field. Click the Add Security button to complete the process. Now buying shares of an ETF increases the ACB by the cost of the shares, plus any trading commissions. To input all of your share purchases, click New Transaction at the top of the page. You'll be brought to a separate screen that will allow you to input your transactions. Select the Vanguard Growth ETF portfolio from the Security drop-down menu and choose the transaction type. In this example, you'd select Buy. Then select the settlement date of the trade. And in today's illustration, that would be January 3rd, 2020. We'll then enter 266,194 in the price field. This was the total cost of our initial buy, including commissions. You also have the option of selecting total or per share. Choose total for any buy transactions. And you can skip the commission field as the commission, if any, has already been included in the total cost of the trade. Finally, input the total number of shares purchased. In our example, that's 10,000 shares. We'll then click Add Transaction. Now on to our dividend reinvestment plans or DRIPS. These are referred to as reinvested dividends in the adjustedcostbase.ca site. If you neglect to add your DRIP amounts to your ACB, your future capital gains tax liability will be inflated and you'll pay more taxes than you need to. If you set up a DRIP, most of your ETF distributions will be paid in the form of new shares. I say most, because only whole shares can be purchased, so a portion of each distribution will also be paid in cash. New shares received through reinvested dividends increase your cost base and lower your future capital gains tax liability. In our VGrow example, there were four DRIP transactions. The first DRIP settled on April 8, 2020, with a reinvested dividend amount of $936.84. This resulted in 39 new VGrow units purchased. To include this information, click on Add Transaction and then follow the same steps for the remaining three DRIP transactions on July 9, 2020, October 8, 2020, and January 8, 2021. Next, there's that final sale in our illustration. Selling ETF units decreases your ACB by the number of shares sold, multiplied by the ACB per share. In our example, we'll again select the Vanguard Growth ETF portfolio from the Security drop-down menu. We'll choose the transaction type, sell, and then fill in January 29th, 2021 as the settlement date of the trade. We'll now enter $297,157.55 in the price field. This represents the total proceeds received from the sale minus commissions. And just as with the buy transaction earlier, you should choose total rather than per share for any sell transactions. And you can skip the commission field as we've already deducted any commission from the total proceeds received from the sale. We'll then input the total number of shares sold. In this example, we sold all 10,193 shares. We can then click on Add Transaction. We're not done yet. Sometimes fund managers don't distribute all investment income to their unit holders. They might instead reinvest some of it back into the ETF, which increases your ACB, while decreasing your future capital gains tax liability. These reinvested distributions often occur annually at year-end, and they're generally the result of capital gains realized within the fund. That's why adjustedcostbase.ca refers to them as reinvested capital gains distributions. However, these non-cash distributions aren't always made up of capital gains. They could be the result of a reinvested Canadian eligible dividend distribution, a reinvested return of capital distribution, or any type of reinvested income distribution. For this reason, I prefer to simply call these non-cash distributions, reinvested distributions, or phantom distributions, since they don't appear on your account statements. In any case, 
Do not simply add the capital gains figure from box 21 of your T3 slip to your ACB. This could lead to tax reporting errors. Now remember that information I had you download from the CDS.ca website earlier? You'll now use it to accurately calculate reinvested distributions. In the report, find the row labeled Total Non-Cash Distribution Per Unit. This is also known as the fund's reinvested distribution per unit. Each reinvested distribution will be multiplied by the number of units of the ETF held on the record date, and then added to the ACB. In this example, there was a single 2020 VGRO reinvested distribution of $0.11385 per unit. In the notes section of the spreadsheet, Vanguard also indicated that this particular non-cash distribution was made up entirely of capital gains. As we held 10,149 units of VGRO on the December 31, 2020 record date, this reinvested distribution will cause our ACB to increase by $1,155.46. That's 10,149 VGRO units multiplied by VGRO's 0.11385 reinvested distribution per unit. If you fail to make this adjustment, you'll pay some unnecessary tax when you eventually sell your VGRO units. To include this reinvested distribution, add a new transaction for VGRO, this time selecting Reinvested Capital Gains Distribution. For the date field, use the December 31, 2020 record date of the distribution, not the payment date. Then, enter 0.11385 in the Reinvested Capital Gains Distribution Amount field. This time, be sure to select Per Share instead of Total from the drop-down menu to the right. Then click on Add Transaction. There's one more variation on the theme to cover. When a fund pays a Return to Capital, or ROC, distribution, it's essentially giving you back a portion of your initial contributions. ROC is not taxable in the year you receive it. However, a return of capital distribution decreases your ACB, which in turn increases your future capital gains tax liability. If you don't adjust your return of capital, you'll pay less tax than you owe, and the CRA won't be too impressed. Continuing with our example, let's adjust the cost base by accounting for the return of capital for each distribution. Again, this information can be found on the Statement of Trust Income Allocations and Designations in the row labeled Return of Capital. In our VGRO example, there were four quarterly return of capital distributions in 2020, and each of these should be entered as a separate transaction. To include them, add a new transaction for VGRO, this time selecting return of capital. For the date field, input the April 1, 2020 record date of the first distribution, not the payment date. Then, enter 0.00016 in the return of capital amount field. And similar to the reinvested distribution from our last example, select Per Share from the drop-down menu to the right and click on Add Transaction. Follow the same process for the remaining three return of capital distributions on July 2nd, October 1st, and December 31st, 2020. At last, we're finished inputting all types of transactions. Now you can click on the View All Transactions tab near the top of the screen to review your inputs. For our VGRO example, we inputted a total of 11 transactions to accurately calculate our ACB and the subsequent capital gain on the full sale of our units. Now all you have to do is complete this same exercise for each of your holdings every year. Fun stuff. Again, we also recommend clicking on the Excel format link above your transaction history and downloading a backup copy of the data annually for your records. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to accurately track the adjusted cost base of your Vanguard or iShares Asset Allocation ETF. I'm Justin Bender of PWL Capital, and if you enjoyed this video, or at least found it helpful, please subscribe to the Canadian Portfolio Manager YouTube channel. And if you'd like to learn more about calculating your ACBs, check out the white paper I co-authored with Dan Bordelotti entitled, As Easy as ACB.